Hey folks, and welcome to my 12 games of Christmas horror edition. Just in time for Halloween. Wait, that's already passed. Uh, let's, let's, Thanksgiving? Oh, Christmas. I just said Christmas. All right, so I'm just going to dive right into this list because, hey, let's hope that I don't knock this candle over. Nice little accent there for you. So you notice I'm trying something a little different for this holiday list. i um, just going to sit here and Let's see how this works out. So we're looking at 12 games that are horror themed that would be appropriate for that horror fan, that board gamer in your life that you're looking to get something. Or maybe it's a Christmas present for yourself. Or maybe it's for me. Who knows? All right. So I'm just going to dive right in. Number 12. I'm going to be looking at a game that is a party game. It's based on a popular app of the same name. It plays three to six players, it plays in under 30 minutes, and it's got a a bit of a, where you're leading these zombies and there's some diplomacy in it. And so that game is going to be Zombie Tsunami. Now, again, this is based on an app, so this is a great game for that fan in your life who is a fan of the app and maybe doesn't even play board games. But what I really like about this game is that it's a party game that plays it plays relatively quickly, but you're leading these zombie hordes and storming the city and you got to contend with humans, but there's this diplomacy aspect to it. So you have to sometimes cooperate with people at the table or betray them or bluff them. And I really enjoy it. And it really does kind of bring the feeling of the app to the table. So that's going to be number 12, Zombie Tsunami. Number 11 on my list is going to be a horror re-theme of an old staple, an old familiar that is older than I am, honestly. And that is going to be Axis and Allies and Zombies. I know not everything needs zombies, and I honestly didn't think Axis and Allies needed it. But this is honestly a pretty good game because it's a streamlined version of Axis and Allies. But it's a good gift for that fan in your life who maybe likes that more classic board game feel, but maybe they like horror games. And so this is a little tongue in cheek, but it's a very serious game. And I've actually enjoyed playing it so far, despite the fact that I haven't probably played Axis and Allies in quite a while. I really did enjoy the streamline rules on this, but honestly, it's got a lower price point. It's a little more mass marketing. So it really does suit that classic gamer in your life who enjoys horror. So that's going to be number 11, Axis and Allies and Zombies. All right, at number 10, I cheated a little. This isn't actually a board game, but not everyone in your life who loves games loves board games. But to me, tabletop gaming is all encompassing, and I really do love role-playing games, especially given my initials are RPG. And my first actual love of RPGs wasn't Dungeons and Dragons. It was Vampire the Masquerade a game that even to this day, I still absolutely adore. So I'm specifically looking at the recently released 5th edition. This is a beautiful new edition of the game that really feels closer in terms of lore and story feel to the original edition. It does have an updated rule set and it, it actually streamlines the rules a bit. But this is a great gift to give to a collector of role-playing books, fans of Vampire the Masquerade, yourself or just people who are actually playing the game right now. So this is a, a new version that is beautiful to look at. I love the stories within it. And yes, it's not a board game, but I'm sure you have a role playing fan in your life. So that's going to be number 10 Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition. All right. So at number nine for me is going to be a game that I'm typically not a fan of the series. But this is going to be the first one on my list that I consider more of a stocking stuffer. And this really is a series of games, but I'm specifically looking at the, the first version. And that's going to be One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Now, again, I don't play werewolf very often, but if I were to play werewolf, this is the version I will play. It plays much quicker. It's much more streamlined. Plus, you could go and play or you could go and buy any of the other versions as well if your friends already got 
One Night Ultimate Werewolf. But this really is, it has such a low price point that it's a perfect little stocking stuffer. It is older, I believe it came out in 2014, so I think it's gonna be the oldest game on my list, but it still stands as a great stocking stuffer, cheap price point, and works for gamers and non-gamers. So that's gonna be number nine, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, or any of the One Night games. All right, so at number eight is a second edition of one of my favorite games. And this game is not new this year, but it does have an expansion that is new this year. And so one of my favorite games is Mansions of Madness. I loved first edition, but second edition to me is always going to now trump it. The Fantasy Flight has those games with the apps. You have Descent, you have the Star Wars Imperial Assault. But for me, Mansions of Madness is really a game that showed what could be done in a story-driven game with an app where the app doesn't feel intrusive. It feels like it's really driving the narrative that the players are also driving and taking care of that annoying housekeeping. So this is a great game for fans of the Lovecraft mythos, great game for fans of horror in general. In fact, some of the stories feel just more horror than Lovecraft in some ways. But it allows you to play with an app, so you can you can play it with non-gamers, you can play it with gamers, and if they already own the base edition, great, you can get them one of the expansions. If you have that friend in your life who still is a holdout on first edition, like I was at first, bring them into the now with this edition. Bonus, they get to use components from their old edition. So while the game is now a couple years old, to me it's still a great gift. It does have a higher price point, but you can look at the expansions for maybe a little lower price point. And an extra bonus here is you get a stocking stuffer idea too. Say you have a friend who does own the game. Well, my biggest complaint with this game is there's not enough dice in that base box. They sell dice packs. So Go ahead and grab a couple of those second edition dice packs for the game and throw it in their stocking. So that's going to be number eight, Mansions of Madness second edition or any of the expansions or the dice packs. All right, at number seven, it's going to be another game that's part of a series of games. I mean, at this point, Tiny Epic Everything, right? I'm, I'm actually waiting for that. Tiny Epic Everything, the game. I just, I want them all together. But I'm specifically going to be looking at another game with the zombie theme on it. Because honestly, while zombies are still getting a little tired for me, people love zombies. And zombies sell, and people who don't play board games love zombies as well. Actually, probably more so than people who play board games. So I'm going to be looking at Tiny Epic Zombies. Now, this one is actually really racing up my list of the Tiny Epic series because it just feels more streamlined. Uh, well, again, the zombie theme, it's horror. I enjoy it for the most part. But what I love is there's five different modes you can play this game in. This game, of all the games on the list, is going to be the one that I most recommend for that solo board game in your life because this game plays amazingly solo. So that's going to be number seven, Tiny Epic Zombies. All right, so number six. I'm going to call this game, let's see, part novelty, part strategy, and a game that no matter who is near the table, they want to touch it. They want to play it. And this is a game that I originally saw at Origins 2017, and I wanted to play it. I wanted to touch it. And it's again in that Lovecraft mythos, because for me, horror always tends to skew that direction. So this is going to be in that direction again. But again, it's part novelty. It's Honestly, part kerplunk. And that is going to be Tower of Madness. Now, for me, I describe this game as it's like Cthulhu himself came down and redesigned kerplunk. That's an understatement, but you do get that feeling of pulling things out. And you've got the marbles in, the, in this clock tower, this 3D clock tower. And they fall down and they could help you, they could hurt you, they could spell doom. But what's great about this game is board gamers are going to love the game for the tactile feel and for the honestly really decent strategy here for something that at first glance looks like a novelty. But non-board gamers are going to be drawn into it for the novelty of pulling out these tentacles and it really has this huge table presence that I would be hard pressed to say that if I bought this for a non-board gamer, 
that they wouldn't want to play it. So if you've got a non-board gamer in your life who you want to try to get them in and you know that they're a fan of horror and the Lovecraft mythos, this is a great game to take a look at. So that's going to be number six, Tower of Madness. All right, at number five for me is going to be another game that fits into a series. And I chose some of these because it gives you a wide range of things to choose from, even if you don't go horror in it. Now, say on the Tiny Epic, you could go non-horror, but this list is Horror Games for Christmas. So this game is going to be part of a series everyone at this point probably knows, and that's going to be Exit. Now, specifically, I'm looking at the Sinister Mansion, which is the newest one in the series. This is a stocking stuffer game. It has a very low price point, but this is a great game for a horror fan. This is a great game for a group of people. This is a puzzle escape room type game. So it's a great game for fans of escape rooms, but it fits into a stocking. It's a solid experience. This game is more than just a board game. It's an experience. And this one of all of them, the theme has drawn me in the most. Now it's hard to talk too much about this game without spoiling it. So I'm just going to leave it there. And that is going to be number five, Exit, The Sinister Mansion, or really any of the Exit series. Now at number four, this is really your choice of two games. Now, this game is really an interesting game because it it has this tactile feel to it. The game actually is completely a memory and touch sort of thing. Now, the choices are going to be Nyctophobia, which is the, the original game, or Nyctophobia, the vampire one. Now, for me, I personally do prefer the vampire one, but I'm going to state that as far as I know, that is a Target exclusive. So if you're going to get that one, you're going to need to go to Target. But a lot of people do their Christmas shopping at Target, so that's probably not a bad thing. Now, what's really cool about this game is the fact that the players at the table are touching. You're touching to figure out where to go and where you need to escape from the player playing the vampire or in the original version, the axe murderer or mage. And you wear these special glasses that are blackout so you can't really see the board. Now, in addition to that, if you have some time, I do recommend reading up on how this game came about. It is an excellent read and it really shows how going towards accessibility in board games really led to a unique experience and a board game that of all the games I've played this year in the horror genre really was refreshing to me. So that's going to be number four, Nyctophobia or the vampire version. All right, so at number three, I chose a game that I have just fallen completely in love with, but this game really blurs lines. This game blurs a line between an RPG and a board game. Now, in the past, I've been really critical of games that try to be both an RPG and a board game because normally I find that they do neither very well. This is an amazing exception to that rule. This is going to be Folklore the Affliction. Now, this game is a great option for a board gamer. It's a great option for a role player. I personally love RPGs. My initials are RPG, but I love board games first and foremost. So this game really satisfies both for me. Now, what's really cool about this is in addition to this rich lore and story is the expandability of this game. In addition to expansions coming out and so much content already in the base box that you have options to give, they have an adventure creation kit, which I think even if you have somebody who already has the game, this is still something that'd be great to get them, the adventure creation kit, because it'll allow them to create their own stories and their own game within the game. This game really is a shining example of what can happen when you blend the world of RPGs with board games. So that's going to be number three, Folklore, The Affliction, or the expansions, or the adventure creation kit. And at number two, honestly, I could probably just say the name of this game and cut right to number one. But this is a game that I haven't actually played as I haven't gotten my hands on it yet. But this game just goes without explanation that I expect this game to be very hot this Christmas. It's coming out, I believe, from the time I'm recording this video, it should be out in the next week or so. This game is Betrayal Legacy. Now, Betrayal at House on the Hill, for me, is still 
a gateway game. I still use it as a gateway game, and despite the fact that it is showing its age and it does have some issues, the game still stands up for me as a great game that I play with non-gamers and occasionally just gamers that we just want to enjoy something from the past. But you combine that with legacy and that story driven. And this really, from what I've seen of it, is really going to take Betrayal from being this standalone one-off adventure to being this multi-game story driven experience. So Betrayal, a great game in its own right, gets the legacy treatment. And while I don't think every game needs the legacy treatment, this is one that I absolutely believe needed the legacy treatment, and I am excited, and if you want to get me something for Christmas, Betrayal Legacy. So that's going to be number two, Betrayal Legacy. All right, so I've reached number one. I hope you've already found something in this list that would be good for you, your friends, your loved ones, but if not, this was my number one pick of the year. Now, I'm going to say that this was a tough call between this and my number two, Betrayal. But in the end, this is a complete... This, this, this ended up actually winning in a complete landslide by all of the voters, which consisted of me and... Well, me. So, this is a, a game that for me this year was a complete surprise. It is a revamp of my number three game of all time. And that is going to be Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. I expect this game to be very hot this Christmas. Because Arkham Horror is now, I don't know, 30 years old, I believe? Because the version we've been playing is 2nd Edition. The older version being in the old style boxes. So, me personally, I own everything made for Arkham Horror. Now, this version is not in any way backwards compatible with any of that. And that's not a bad thing at all. The old version is still perfectly playable, but this is a complete revamp. It brings Arkham Horror to the now. It feels like a more modern version. It does what I wanted Eldritch Horror to do. I'm already completely enamored with this, despite the fact that I still love the original Arkham Horror that I will still play. This game is great for someone who already owns the old Arkham Horror and they want to play something new within that universe, within that familiar feel, but a new game. This is also a great way to bring somebody into Arkham Horror, hopefully, and then maybe get them to play the old version with you. But overall, this really is just going to be good for fans of the Lovecraft mythos, fans of horror, and also that fan who loves Arkham Horror but has really wanted a revamp. So, of this list, I chose this at number one because it's a good gift, but it's also a great game to buy yourself for Christmas. And at the end of the day, get yourself something. So, that's going to be my 12 games, or 12 horror games of Christmas. I hope you have found something on this list that will work for that loved one in your life, for yourself, for me, as I said. Um, and beyond that, you know what? Obviously, I went with horror for Christmas, and, and that's fun. And and I, this could have been a Halloween game list. But for me, horror games hold a sp special place for me. I love getting people to play them with me. And I hope you have a Merry Christmas, and I will see you folks in 2019. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.